Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I just want to make a brief, quick tutorial on this new board that I got, and I love it. It's called the Xiao ESP32C3. It's not to be confused with the ESP32S3, which is the newer version of this. This is a development board. It may not come with pins on it. I just soldered mine. I'm not going to get into the technical specs of it. I'm just going to show you how to take this board, how to put a code or program on it, and how to run it. That's it. It's just a simple blink program. It comes with an antenna. We don't need to plug this in. So the only thing you'll need to get started is to, you can use a breadboard, the board itself, and an LED or wires if you're not using a breadboard. Any LED and then you may or may not use a resistor. This is just for test purposes so you don't really need, I don't want to say you don't need a resistor, but I don't need a resistor. The light LED comes on without it, however it does shorten or quicken the lifespan of the LED bulb if you don't use current limiting factor because it could burn the LED. If it's not getting hot or warm, when you run this program, you should be fine. It's only going to be running for a few seconds. If you do intend to make this a long lasting program, or if your LED starts to get hot or warm, then you will want a current limiting resistor. In my personal experience, I have found that any resistor between the ranges of 100 and 220 ohms works that I've tested. You're going to also need a data cable, USB-C data cable. So this one is C. USB-C. So don't make the mistake of getting any kind of USB-C cable because these often, especially if they're thinner, some just serve power and don't actually transfer data. So make sure that you get a data cable or data transferring and power cable. So if you have those components, you're set, good to go. I'll get into the IDE a little later. This board has two buttons on it. This one is the boot button. The one, if you're facing the Wi-Fi square. The one on the left, it'll be marked with a B. This one is the boot button and this one is the reset button. Boot, reset, the antenna gets plugged here but we don't need that. This board is different from the ESP32 and the Arduino Nano and the Raspberry Pi and Pico, Arduino Uno, all that. It's not a plug and play board. It's different in that you must press and hold boot while you plug it into the computer in order for it to be programmable. And then of course you like it with the boot button as soon as it's plugged in the computer. It'll upload the program but then the program won't run immediately. So what you have to do is either press the reset button while it's still plugged into the computer in boot mode to get the program to run or just unplug the device from the computer and then plug it back in without holding boot and um, it'll run the program there. So once you, once I show you everything and you upload the blink program to your device, it's not going to start blinking. Don't be alarmed. You must press reset for the program to run. In other words, the board stays in bootloader mode or bootloader mode is only for programming the board. It is not for running the program. You must take the board out of bootloader mode in order to get your programs to run. And you just do that by either pressing reset or just unplugging it and not holding down boot when you plug back into a power source. And then whenever you want to upload new code to it, you just press and hold the boot and it goes back into program mode. So to the code part, this is the Arduino IDE. I found the best way and the fastest way, simplest way to program this board is using the Arduino IDE. This board can be programmed in both C, C++, and MicroPython. However, from my research, I understand MicroPython to be very um, space consuming and slower than C. The programming language C communicates directly with the device's hardware, whereas MicroPython has to be converted into simple machine language before the device can understand it. So it takes a little bit more time. I also use C, C++ more so than MicroPython, so I would like to stick to what I'm going to be using to have mo more practice with it. Anyways, okay, let's jump over to the code. So this is the Arduino IDE. It already has the Blink program on it. This is what you will type. You can, there's only a few lines. You can just type it in and create a new script. You can use any data pin that you want. Just know that if you have a single digit data pin that you're using, when you input it in the code right here, you're going to need to not put a leading zero. So for example, data pin two, you don't want to put D02 because it won't compile, it'll cause errors. So just put D2. You can access the boards manager in two different ways. One of them is by clicking this icon here, simple enough. Um, your IDE may not have this depending on what version you have. You can click this icon or you can go to tools and then board and then boards manager. Either way, you end up in the same location. So just click that little icon there. I don't even know what shape that is in. I guess I already know. Anyway, so you're going to type in ESP32. And the one that you need to install is ESP32 by a 
expressive systems. I already have it installed. You'll just hit install and then you will have the option to go to tools and board and then have the ESP32 board for use. So you'll just scroll down here or just type in X and then you see XIAO or Xiao ESP32 C3. I don't know if it's pronounced Xiao or if it's just an abbreviation for a company name or something. I that I don't know, but I say Xiao, um, which I guess is the Chinese pronunciation of this. Don't confuse it with the ESP S3. Some might say, oh, well, why can't I just use an ESP32 regular board? It'll cause errors, so don't do that. If you do not install the ESP32 by Espressive Systems, then when you go to Tools and Board, you won't have ESP32 there as an option. If you do not see ESP32 by Espressive Systems in this list of Board Manager, you're gonna need to go to File, Preferences, and then where it says Additional Boards Manager URLs, you're gonna click I already have the link in here. You'll copy and paste this link into the space and make sure you don't have any um, spaces before or after it. I mean, you might it might be fine if you did, but anyway, just be safe. And if you already have URLs here, just hit enter and then you have to put one URL per line. You can't separate them with commas, but then you're gonna hit okay. And so what this does is it takes the third party board information and kind of allows the IDE to pull that data from a third party source outside of the application and apply it into the application so that, so that the IDE can properly program your board. That didn't need to be as complicated as I made it, sorry. Once you have that installed, you're just going to go to tools. You can now go to board ESP32 7X and it'll bring you right to the X's. So you're gonna click that. But once you have that pulled up and the code here, then you're going to take your device and we're gonna go ahead and connect all the hardware, which is just your data, whatever data pin you have, in my case it's D2. You're gonna connect one wire to ground, which is the negative. And then the other to the data pin, it's, it's basically the positive. The board sends power from the data pin, whatever you choose. I think it's like three volts or something, 3.3. Sends that voltage through the data pin to power whatever is connected to it on the positive side. This light is both a green and red light, so I guess today it'll be green. And again, I'm not using a resistor because this is just for testing purposes to see if everything works as it should on the board. I don't have a use for a blink program and I'll show you guys how to do real stuff with this board in the future, but you're gonna take your data cable, plug it into your computer because I realize that it's really hard to break and hold boot when you're plugging in the bigger part of the USB rather than the smaller C part. Make sure you're pressing boot button, not the reset, okay? Very important. If you press reset, it'll be plugged in and all like it's gonna upload and like everything's fine, but then it won't officially upload successfully and it'll say hardware error. I know because I did that. So you will select the latest com port that just opened up and if you don't know which one, then just simply unplug it and then plug it back in and you'll see the com port show up whichever one wasn't there before you plugged it in. So that's correct. Everything is good. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff. All these settings should be automatic based off of the board manager package that you installed, which is ESP32 in this case. So enough talk and let's go ahead and press. This button is going to just verify. You don't need to do that because this error button, the upload button automatically verifies it and uploads it. It's kind of confusing using this, all this data, when you see this means it's done. I'm so used to programming Arduino um, nanos that as soon as the code uploads, I'm looking at it like, okay, it's not working, what's happening? It's not going to happen because it can't run a program while being in bootloader mode. So you have to take it out of bootloader mode, take it out of programming mode by pressing pop quiz. What do we press? Reset, or you can just unplug it from your computer and plug it back in. And you can see can you see it? Yeah, you see it. Okay, and I don't have a resistor, but if you wanna use a resistor, I can show you how to do that. All you would have to do is just put the resistor in between the positive lead going to the light. I can take, I don't know if it's safe to like do this while it's running, it's fine. Take risks. So I just shifted the positive data pin lead back a few spaces on the breadboard enough to fit this resistor in between it. And it looks like I shifted it over to the red one. So <laughs> we're going with red now. There. So that's if you wanted to use a resistor or needed to based off of your individual hardware components. Anyways, that is all, that's all you gotta do. And then whenever you wanna program it again, what are you gonna do? You're gonna press and hold the boot button. First, you gotta take it out. You press and hold the boot button, plug it back in, and you see it's not blinking anymore. So 
So pressing reset or unplugging the device and then plugging it back in without pressing boot is how you get the program that you uploaded to run. If you want it in bootloader mode or in programming mode, then you're gonna press and hold boot and then plug it in. That is kind of how, it's kind of like how the Raspberry Pi Pico boards operate. Um, however, I've noticed that my Raspberry Pi activates the code or runs the code as soon as it's uploaded and I don't need to press reset or anything, but I do need to press and hold boot while I plug in the Pico, same as this. So it's, it's weird. I don't know how boards kind of do that. I'm sure there's a workaround that somebody out there has to get the board to run the program in bootloader mode. I'm not going to do that. I don't need to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like, show support. I plan on connecting this board with other devices too. So if you want more tutorials, be sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.